If, if I have these little cards, just like you have little cards, and I take the card and I hand you a card, and you, if you get anterior segment of the right upper lobe, because it'll always be one lung only, right? Then you then you first you got to position the patient. Then you got to ask yourself, is the bed right? Does it need to be tipped or anything? And then you got to say, where would I clap? Okay. And if it's the right upper lobe, so take your time. Okay. Let me see now. Right. Yeah. Right. Because if you stand this way, you can get goofed up, right? So I'm looking like this. I go, okay, this is the right upper lobe, and that's where I would clap, right there, right below her collarbone. And then I would ask you, Jess, would you clap there on her? And you'd go, no. no, right? But you could drain it, right? You can drain this on an adult female, but you can't clap on the front of her chest. Okay, so that's that. That's the right, that's the left. I'm going to pick one. She has a TB in her right upper lobe or a lung abscess or something, and I'm going to work on that. Okay, if you could sit up, please, sit all the way up. You can put your legs over the edge of the bed if it's more comfortable. Okay, so that would be comfortable. I can't sit up very well straight up if my knees aren't bent. I don't know about you, but <laughs> that's just my life. <laughs> so uh, sitting on the edge of the bed would be fine for something like this. Little kids can just sit up. Okay, so she's draining something here. It's still the upper lobes. Apical. It's the apex. And I know there's different things in the books, but I'm just showing you what I think is an acceptable position, and you can also use your book position if you prefer. Okay, so this is the apex. The apex of the lung is at the top. If it's that same right upper lobe, then I'm gonna clap right there. And I can clap there on her. So, you know, so probably if it was her upper lobes, I wouldn't even bother to do the front, because I can't clap on there. I'd just sit her up and do this, and then, okay. And then if you were gonna be, no, I like to do this next one, like this flip the bedside table over here and put a pillow on it. If you could just lean over onto that, how's that feel? You want it a little lower? Is that comfortable like that? Oh, there you go. See, look at that. Look, isn't that spiffy? Okay, so now I'm still on the upper lobes. I'm still doing the right and the left, but her right is the one that's the problem. So I'm thinking, you know, because you don't want to actually do the wrong thing and then chart it, you know. <laughs> yes, I did the left upper lobe for 30 minutes. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> Stuff like that happens, right? <laughs> Definitely you don't want to chart that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna clap um, on the back of her chest, and I'm not gonna clap on her spine or her shoulder blade, so I have a really narrow, right there. So I put the vibrator on right there, right? Okay, so that's, that's it for the uppers. Okay, so now we should do the middle, yeah? Okay, so if you could lie back down again. So um, first I'm gonna position her, and if you just scoot over a little bit towards me, and then turn onto your side, okay. and I wanna do her right middle lobe, lean back against this thing, and let's put this between your legs there. Okay, so now I've got my patient position correctly, which you saw on your quiz yesterday, the quiz, not quiz. Okay, so this is the one, and the, the word description is the patient is right. you know, lying on their left side, turned right. towards supine. And it could be a quarter turn from supine, so almost supine. See, she's really almost supine now, right? She's almost flat on her back. She's turned almost towards that. but. The bed is not positioned correctly, so that's what I'm going to do next. Because um, if you vip people into Trendelenburg, they freak out. So I'm just going to... Okay, what I'm going to do next, Ms. Shimabukuro, is I'm going to lower your head of your bed, okay? So I'm going to get this thing like this, and get that like that, and then the teacher, which is me, I'm going to say to you, Okay, Lindsay, where would you clap on her? And you're going to say, well, I'd clap on the front of her chest right here, okay? And um, I'm going to say to you, oh, would you really do that? And you go, no, because you don't clap on breast tissue. But can we drain it? Yes. Sure, 20 minutes like this, if we can get her to allow, stay like that for a while. The only problem is you can't leave a patient when they're in Trendelenburg. So, um, but we could lay the bed flat and have her lay like that for a while. 20, 30 minutes, right? And that could help drain out that right lung. So there's there's things you can do. I might have to tell the doctor, eh, we can't really do chest PT on her, we can't clap on her, but we could do um, drainage. Okay? We just do possible drainage by itself, and that would help. Okay, so that's good, okay. Do I need to demonstrate the lingula? Yes. Okay, I want you to think about this for a second. Do I need to demonstrate the lingula? She says no. <laughs> Why, Austin, do I not need to demonstrate the lingula to you? It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing, but you turn around on the right side and tip her back. So we don't really have to do that, right? It's the exact same thing. 
It's a mirror image. Just turn around her right side, never tip back, and you know, clap right there. Could I clap on Austin if he has the right middle lobe pneumonia? Yeah, you bet. What about Lynn when she was eight years old? Sure, absolutely. Asthmatics are people who are prone to neuro problems, <laughs> cystic fibrosis, and things like that. Well, okay, while we have her in this convenient Trendelenburg position, can you turn over onto your stomach? Let's get this pillow out here. Just turn over onto your stomach. So we're, now we're going to do the lower lobes. Okay? So we did the upper, the three positions. We have the one position for the middle and the lingula. And then we have, okay, this is the classic position for chest physical therapy. It's the lower lobes, and that's where the problems are, because that's where the gas exchange occurs. And when you're sitting upright, that's where gravity settles all the mucus. So we want to clean out the lower lobes especially. That's really important. And uh, a lot of people get pneumonia or atelectasis in their lower lobes, very common. So we have her positioned right now to drain the posterior basal segment of the lower lobes of both lungs. And the only difference between that and the superior is just a matter of a hand space. So if I come right below her shoulder blade, put my hand right there, and I put my other hand right there, that hand is over the posterior basal segment. When I clap, I'll use two hands. So I'm clapping over the superior and the posterior, but I'm draining the posterior basal segment. So that's that. If I want to do the other side, come over here. I'll do it right there, right? So this hand right on the edge of the shoulder blade, this hand right next to it, that hand is right. So if I'm testing you, you have if I said left lower low, posterior basal segment, you get a position like this, you find out where left was, put that hand there, that hand there, and you see that's where I'd clap, right there. Okay? So that's the posterior basal segment. Okay, now, um, if you could turn onto your, that side, no, the other way. And I'm gonna put this little on your back. Okay, and just lie on your side, that's good. Now the only problem here can be the person's shoulder, it could be uncomfortable if they're lying on their shoulder, right? So now I have her up on her side. She's not tipped back like this. She's up on her side, okay? And I'm gonna clap on her side. So this is the lateral segment of the left lower lobe. And it's in Trendelenburg. The bed is still in Trendelenburg. So I'm gonna clap on her. When I test you, this will be your third position. So you'll pull a position, you'll pull a position, and then you'll, the last position will always be right or left lateral. So that's hello. Learn how to do that. And that's because for beginners, the best place to clap is right here. It fits the curve of your hand. And you're going to clap for three minutes. And I'm going to count. And you're going to do that, right? Oops, sorry. So you're going to clap. And you're going to clap for your three minutes. Even if you, you know, so are you practicing your clapping? Or did that sort of go away for a little while because you're preparing for testing and stuff? So that would be good to practice, right? Because ultimately, you have to clap. Yeah. Three minutes of clapping. <laughs> now, there's one more position. If you could go back to your stomach, and can you lay the bed flat? Okay, now, this is the last position for the lower lobes that we're going to use. And that's the superior segment. So now the bed is flat. It's just like the posterior basal segment. And this time the hand goes right there, and that's the right spot. The hand that went into the shoulder blade is the right spot. When I clap, I'll clap like this. Two hands. So I'm clapping over the posterior basal segment and the superior segment, but technically I'm draining the superior segment. So this is an acceptable position if the patient can't go in Trendelenburg. It's perfectly good, right? Otherwise, you'd put them in Trendelenburg to do this. So as a lab test, you can be picky and have each segment be separate. But in the real world, you probably aren't going to do every single segment unless it's a cf -er. So what you have, if she has right lower lobe pneumonia, which position is best? Trendelenburg. And you clap, sit here. If she can't tolerate Trendelenburg, she can't put her head down because she gets too short of breath, make the bed flat and do it. So that's why I use those two positions. But in a test, I can use any position. So you so you know that one of the positions is going to be lateral. Yeah. And it's the bed is in Trendelenburg, they're laying on their side, not tipped forward or back, and you know, just go for it. Can you go back on your side again? Just for a second. Now if your patient can't tolerate prone, that's the next problem. So now I'm talking real world, right? They can't tolerate Trendelenburg, leave them prone on their stomach and clap on their back. 
They can't tolerate 